Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to episode three of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. My name is Ryan Rice. Thank you for tuning in, checking out another episode from us. I really appreciate it. So let's get into episode three, the last remaining cons that I can think of. This time I actually did a list. The last two times when I was on the water, I kind of just did it off the top of my head, but I want to do a list just to make sure I got most of the items that I think are the cons of kayak fishing. If I do miss something, drop a comment, let me know. I'll bring it up in another episode. Uh, I plan on doing one more episode after this, which is more of the pros of kayak fishing, but I want to do a list to kind of cover the things that I think are the remaining items. Now, some items may be more of a con to you guys, but for me, they may not be. So I may not bring them up because I always come up with a solution. If I have something negative on the water when I'm on the kayak, I always come up with a way to fix it. So let's get on to the list. Let's get on to the episode so you guys can move on and hope you guys enjoy this. So one of the other cons of kayak fishing is storage on your kayak. I had the Hobie PA-14, which has a huge front hatch. I also had the New Canoe Unlimited, which you can get a gear pod, as they call it up front. I chose not to get the gear pod on the New Canoe for now, just because I want to be able to have more deck space to take out my son. He's been out a few times, but he's not completely ready, but when he is ready to go out with me and just have more leg room for him. So right now I'm running a gear bag. Uh, I picked it up from Amazon, it's made by Cast King. It's a 10 liter, but I'm actually probably gonna go up to a 20 liter soon from some other brand. You know, they're very inexpensive in my dry bag. And I should have done this on the kayak, so I should have showed you, but it's got two Yak Attack, which I don't have any floating around here, just like tie off points. And I put those on the front track of the new canoe and I run my, uh, like a little strap over the top of that just to hold my dry bag in place. In my dry bag is everything I used to keep in my Hobie in the front hatch, which is, you know, multi-tool, toilet paper, extra KBF identifier cards or any kind of identifier cards I need from, for any of the tournaments that I fish in. I keep sunblock, I keep bug spray, I keep a rope, I keep some extra parts, I keep the wrench for my prop for my Torquedo, and some other things I keep in there I'm gonna be adding to it, which will probably be my rain suit. You know, with all the kayaks out there now, even if you don't have a front hatch or a gear pod, or you don't have enough room in your Black Pack Pro, dial it back from being on a boat. I've had multiple boats, I've told you that guys, be, you know, that before, but you really don't need that much on your kayak that you think you, really would need that you would need like you know the items that you would need on a boat you need your gear for fishing obviously you need your lures you need your safety equipment or any of that stuff but you can really dial it down and you can fit it into a dry bag now a lot of these kayaks out there now you can take a big duffel dry bag if you really need to carry that much gear you can get the bigger bags so that's one inexpensive and yes they can get expensive too depending on the you know the name brand that's on it but that's an inexpensive way to be able to bring gear with you tie it down to your kayak and have easy access to it you know no problem if you if you end up flipping your kayak the whole way you know as long as you have a strap down even if you don't have a strap down those gear bags float anyway because you know they're basically you're trapping air in there when you when you uh cinch them up so they're going to float anyway so you're not going to lose your gear per se if you do completely flip your kayak. That's one way to come up with storage solution for your kayak. So I run the Black Pack Pro behind me and I have a gear bag in the front of me, you know, a dry bag. That keeps all my gear. My tackle fits in my backpack Pro or underneath my seat or I just leave it laying on the deck, you know, on my storage boxes. So don't think that you don't have enough room on your kayak. There's so many solutions out there for you to have storage on your kayak to be dry and protected or just storage in general with you now you can travel really light and just take some rods you don't even have to have a crate you can just lay some rods on your deck and you can throw some tackle boxes on your kayak and away you go and you can have an enjoyable day on the water if you do hear any kids screaming i apologize the kids are outside playing it's after school they're out there enjoying the outdoors the way they should be but speaking of items in my dry bag bug spray and my sunblock those are two important items that you want to keep on your kayak at all times because as a con being on a kayak you are exposed completely to the sun now they do make bimini tops for certain kayaks and you can get you know homemade things done or you can do something yourself but we are totally exposed to the sun we don't have a t-top we don't have a bimini top 
top that you know some boats have where you can f you know seek shelter underneath the sun and stay out of the sun while you're just hanging out fishing we are just totally taking those sun rays on all the time i don't know if you can see probably not but yesterday i got 12 more spots frozen on my face my head and my ears you have to stay protected you got to put sunblock on and the ways i do that is sunblock i wear a buff not all the time most of my videos you have time i forget to take it with me but yes you got to wear a buff or you should have a buff around your neck uh, a full brim hat if you've been noticing lately i've been putting full brim hats on just to protect the top of my ears they are constantly getting precancers and cancerous things on my ears and i gotta stop that so i gotta start wearing a full brim hat more or at least bring my buff over the top you have to wear uv clothing you know preferably long sleeve shirts. Most of my shirts, when it's hot out, it don't make a difference if you have a short sleeve, if you're shirtless or have one of those long sleeve UV protected shirts, you know, a long sleeve version, it's gonna be hot no matter what. So you're better off just keeping yourself completely covered with long sleeve shirts, long pants. I've been wearing the Columbia pants now, which are, uh, I'm starting to wear more and more just to protect my legs from the sun. I'm trying to just be conscious of protecting myself from the sun. I, I usually run around with shorts on when it's hot down here in South Carolina, but those Columbia lightweight breathable quick drying pants are very lightweight. They don't make a difference if I'm wearing those or not. I don't feel any hotter, but there are protecting my legs. It's great now. The only thing it really leaves exposed is your feet. So definitely make sure to get the top of your feet really well. Now that you leave shoes on all the time, make sure you spray the top of your feet as well with sunblock and the bug spray. I mean, that could be on a boat or on a kayak, but that's just, I just brought that up. It's not like you can put that kayak in gear and go really fast like a boat to get away from the bugs, kind of get them away from you. So bug spray is another thing you want to keep with you. So that's another con about being in the kayak. You know, the bugs can get really, really vicious. So this make sure you keep that sunblock and that bug spray with you just to keep yourself protected. Another con about being on a kayak is getting hit by a boater. We are so low to the water and in the distance, you know, as that curve curvature of the earth starts to happen we can be really not seen or lost in that horizon really easily you know a lot of people out there drink and boat or not even pay attention or just like they are in the car on their phone and not paying attention and they can be up on you really really fast so you want to keep your head on a swivel always be alert to your surroundings and the way i prevent or hopefully prevent boaters from hitting me is i keep a yak attack flag behind me they have the visit pro and they have the visit pro carbons that break down and all that stuff but i keep a flag mounted to the top of my kayak when i'm on water where where there's high speed boats. Now, if I'm on a body of water where I don't, it's only kayak only, or just like a little electric John boats floating around, I normally don't keep a flag on my boat. But when I'm out on those bigger, larger larger bodies of water, I always throw my flag on the back. And I don't have the high vis orange from Yak Attack. I actually threw American flag on mine, but just that simple waving of a flag, whether it's high vis or not, that should make you more visible to boaters. It's gonna make you seen by others. And they're gonna see that flapping of the flag and they'll be like, you know, what is that, you know? So hopefully it, it grabs their attention. You can also wear high-vis clothing if you prefer. They do make a lot of UV protected shirts that are also high-vis that even with your PFD on, you know, with your long sleeves or just anything like that, you can be seen by, you know, by boaters as well, just wearing high-vis or even though we're wearing a high-vis hat as well. So there's a lot of ways to prevent yourself being hit by a boater. Sometimes you just can't help it, that's why you need to keep your head on a swivel and really pay attention to your surroundings. If you hear something speeding up behind you or up in front of you or whatever, just be, you know, be alert, pay attention, get out of their way, start moving out of the way. I carry an air horn with me and I also carry a whistle. The air horn will grab the boater's attention more than a whistle in my opinion, because I think it's technically louder. So that's another way you can prevent, prevent yourself from getting hit by a boater is grabbing their attention well before they get to you because sometimes if you're just on a kayak with a paddle you're not gonna be able to move as fast as ones that have a pedal drive or with a motor take whatever you can take with you or wear whatever you can wear to make sure that you are either heard or seen on the water when you're gonna have that possibly happen to you just be alert is the number one thing wear high vis clothes use a flag keep an air horn a whistle stand up throw your you know throw your arms around if they're coming up that fast and if they are coming up that fast and you for some reason you are not getting out of the way or they're not turning i hate to say this because you could have more issues but if that boater is really close to you jump off your kayak and go deep go as deep as you possibly can so you don't get hit by the prop or by the boat itself that's last minute you know 
oh crap, I'm gonna get hit by a boat. So you're better off jumping in, going deep as you possibly can, getting below that surface if needed. And hopefully it never happens to any of us. Speaking of being aware of your surroundings, you know, being on the kayak, once again, we're not gonna be able to move away from danger as fast as if we were on a boat. So pay attention to, you know, we have alligators down south. Most of the time they will leave you alone, but I've had one time where I actually got chased and lunged out of the water by a gator. So it must've been protecting its babies, protecting its nest. It's happened to me once. I wasn't petrified, but you know, it, it gets your adrenaline moving, but I got away from that gator in time. So pay attention to the gators. Another thing down here too is we have water moccasins or cotton mouse, uh, which is a very poisonous water snake. They tend to hang in trees. So when you're going underneath trees, make sure you pay attention if you're going to go to the retriever lure or you want to go underneath some cover. Look around before you go underneath that tree or by that bush. I always look and look really, really well. They can blend in a lot more than you think they can. I had a guy when I was out on a how event you know, he was on the water this past year. He got his lure stuck in a tree. It was an expensive lure. He went to go get the lure. And as he was standing up to retrieve the lure, he reached out and said, oh crap, there was a cotton mouth slash water moccasin sitting right in the tree. So his first instinct was not to move fast because he wanted the, you know, the, the snake to strike him. He just kind of just fell slowly sideways out of the kayak and got in the water to get away from that snake. That can be dangerous if the water is cold, but most of the time when the water is that cold and the temperature is that cold, you usually don't see the snakes as easily anyway, but that's what he did. So you got to pay attention to your surroundings because if he saw that snake well before he got to that tree, he probably would have just cut his line, let the lure go, and it would have prevented him from going into the water. Now, when he went into the water, the water was 60 degrees, so it was a little chilly. He was close to the ramp. We got him back. He changed his clothes. It was okay. But still, at 60 degrees, that water can still slow you down. If you have heart issues, can cause a problem, which will bring us into the next uh, con about kayak fishing, and that's falling in the water, especially cold water. Cold water can, I don't care how young you are, how strong of a swimmer you are, cold water can get you into hypothermia extremely fast, even if it's just in the 50s. It's gonna slow you down, you're gonna start cramping up. If you have a heart condition, it can cause major problems with that. The best thing to do is if you are fishing in cold weather slash water like I do, I usually fish all year round, is it's not cheap, but you're gonna to want to invest in a dry suit. NRS, none of these people I'm talking about I'm sponsored with, you know that I'm not sponsored by anybody except for a few. NRS makes a dry suit. I know it's a lot of money and we'd rather spend our money on fishing poles, reels, lures, etc. but if you take this seriously and you take your life seriously and you wanna go home to your family, you're gonna to want to invest in that dry suit or a dry suit from anybody. They can range up even higher, trust me. So I got a dry suit from NRS. My wife bought it for me because she wants me to come home. It'd probably be hard for me to spend that money on a dry suit, but she wants me to come home. So think about that. You know, falling into the water when it's cold can be very, very dangerous. Even when it's warm, falling in the water is not normally a big of a deal. You can still fall into the water where there's snakes, where there's gators or anything like that can attack you or you get stuck in the mud and can just be a bad day for you. Make sure that you, once again, are prepared for cold water entry. Even when it's warm out, be prepared for water entry. If it's early on in the day, a lot of times you can get back in your boat and you can dry off from the sun and the heat, but keep spare clothes with you, you know, in your truck. This way, when you get back to your truck, even if you are not cold, at least you can change and get into dry clothing before you get into your vehicle. And it just helps prevent any problems with uh, stains or anything on your seat. And that's gonna bring us into the last few items. And that is to, you have to learn to get into your kayak that you personally use all the time or you own. You can practice getting into any kayak, but you wanna practice getting into, into the kayak that you are utilizing all the time. And not just getting out into two, three feet of water and hopping back in, I'm talking about taking it out to where it's eight, nine feet, where it's above your head, obviously on a warmer day, in a very safe area where there's no boaters, no issues with you getting into the water and practice getting into your kayak. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there on it. That's why I've never done it. You know, Gene from Fluke, you know, Fluke Master, Chad Hoover's done one. Gene purposely flipped his kayak and utilized a strap, wrapped it around his kayak, tied it off to a rail or whatever, and he got on the other side. And with the kayak flipped, you know, on its up on his belly, I guess you could say, or its back, or it's underneath, you know, on this part of the kayak, he steps in the strap, and that helps him with his body weight to flip his kayak back around. Just go watch that video; you'll see what I mean. 
and then he just makes sure the deck is makes he makes sure the deck is clear, and he just pushes down, gets his belly up on top of the kayak, and then he shimmies himself back in and gets himself on the butt. Once you are in your kayak, just don't panic. Take your time. Get yourself positioned. Get your seat set if it you know fell out or whatever. Just the main thing is don't panic. Nothing, it's gonna be okay. You'll get back in your kayak. It just may take a little bit to do it. That's why it's good to practice that. Practice that quite a few times. Just don't go out one time and do it one time. Go out, plan on spending like an hour or so on it. Flip your kayak completely over. Obviously you don't have your gear with you so you're not losing it, but flip your kayak over. Practice getting it back upright. Practice getting into that kayak and get a system down that you are comfortable with and confident with that you are spending less time in the water, especially when it's cold. Just practice it. I know it's not an item that we all want to do or ever want to do. I suggest you practice getting in, getting back into your kayak. Go out and do it. Get yourself comfortable. Get yourself a system down that if, this, if it ever does happen in real life or real time, that you have a system down where you just, okay, I need to get my strap. I need to flip the kayak over. I need to clear my deck. I need to get my belly up on top and get my butt situated in there. Trust me, it will save your life. The last con on my list is kind of a few items put together, but you need to be in physical shape to do kayak fishing. There's a lot of kayaks out there now that you can just jump on and they're super stable. You can throw motors on them so you're not physically paddling, you're not pedaling, but you still need to be in physical shape to get the, the kayak to the water. Get it back to you get it back to your vehicle and that what if that what if you do fall in that what if can i can i flip the kayak back over can i get back in the kayak you got to think about that so if you are not sure that you can physically do that i wouldn't suggest going on the water at all just because it's not worth your life if you are just i know kayak fishing is fun and a lot of people want to get into it but if you cannot get that kayak flipped back over or you cannot get back in your kayak, it's not worth getting yourself into danger or your life. I would just stick with a boat and you can jump on it, motor along, and it's a lot simpler in the way of, or let me say that, reset it. It's technically more safer just because you are in less danger of like flipping in or falling in over a kayak. Both, both kayaks and boats both have their dangers, especially with the people we have on these waters these days. But you gotta make sure that you're physically in shape. Make sure that you are mentally sound to be on the water if you are put into a situation where you are in trouble. The main thing is just stay calm. You know, if the water's warm, just stay calm. Even if you have to just swim your kayak to the shore, whatever, and call for help, but make sure that you can handle being on the kayak. It's a different experience than being on the boat. It's super enjoyable, but it has its own danger just like being on the boat. To me, that kind of sums up the cons of kayak fishing. I mean, I'm sure there's other items out there. Please drop a comment if I miss something. There's, there's a lot of cons to everything that we do, but I don't want to say so many things that it persuades you guys from not wanting to do this because it is a great way of getting on the water. It's a, way, it's a great way of healing. It's a great way to experience nature at a whole different level. And I'm gonna cover all those pros of kayak fishing in the last video. I appreciate all of you guys watching this video, staying along through me, mumbling along about things. But if you have any questions, any concerns, just reach out to me, drop a comment on this video. You can reach me across all my social medias. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok uh, at RJM Fishtails. All those social media pages has my contact information. You can email me at rjmfishtails at icloud.com. And my phone number is also available on all my social medias as well. You can shoot me a text, say, hey, this is blah, blah, blah. I watched your video. What do you think about this? So don't be scared to reach out to me about any of this stuff. This is why I'm doing this channel to help others make a decision or help them along with the sport that we love to do. So as always, guys, I really, really appreciate all of you guys. I really appreciate all the subscribers. Drop a comment, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't yet. It just really helps build our channel. I hate saying this because it's just like every other channel out there. I really don't say that that much, but I can use the help to just get that little bump, start that momentum because of the uh, algorithm to YouTube. However it works, I don't know. I just do videos, put them up. If, they're, if they make a lot of views, great. If they don't, it is what it is. I'm not gonna chase after it. If you guys could just help us along by doing those couple of items, a thumbs up, dropping a comment, subscribing, I really appreciate it. And as always guys, be safe on the water for sure. And I'll catch you guys on water. Thanks for watching.